when some people accidentally bump into something or someone, they instinctively ask, Are you blind? Don't you have eyes? Can't you see? Others get angry at these remarks because they believe they can see very well. Yet there are times we have to admit we are blind, that we don't see as well as we should, that we don't see beyond the obvious, that we don't see beyond the physical. During the World War II, John Howard was blinded in an aeroplane explosion and could not see a thing for the next 12 years. One day as he was walking down a street in Texas, he suddenly began to see red sand in front of his eyes. A miracle of sorts had taken place. Without warning, his sight had returned. According to an eye specialist, a blocking of blood to the optic nerve caused by the explosion had opened. Commenting on his experience, John Howard said, You don't know what it is like for a father to see his children for the first time ever. In the Gospel of John 9, 1-41, something more spectacular happened to the man born blind. Jesus conferred on him not only his physical sight, but also spiritual insight. He opened his eyes of faith so that the man believed in Jesus as one who believes in the sun shining in the sky. The Gospel gives a detailed account of the cure of the blind man on the Sabbath and how, as he progressively sees more and more, the Pharisees who believe they are spiritual insight see less and less. The Gospel briefly focuses on Jesus who gives sight to the blind man and then highlights the various characters who are in various degrees of blindness. It starts with the disciples of Jesus who on seeing the blind man see him as a subject of interesting debate on the cause of blindness. They are blind to the need of the blind man. Jesus prefers to reach out to the blind man and then asks him to wash in the pool of Siloam. Incidentally, Siloam means being sent and stands for Jesus, the one who is sent to restore sight to the blind. Receiving sight is a slow process. It implies being ready to do what God wants, not what we feel like doing. Next, the focus is on the parents of the blind man, who also prefer to act as blind people. They know that their son was blind from birth. They now have the evidence that he can see. But when confronted by the fact, they prefer to be non-committal, so as not to get into trouble with anyone. He's old enough. Let him speak for himself, they say. They are blinded by the fear of being expelled by the religious authorities. The focus then shifts from the blind man who can now see to the Pharisees who refuse to see. They refuse to see the truth. They question the blind man and try to distort his testimony. The more they confront and try to distort the truth, the more the blind man is adamant in his witnessing to Jesus and in confronting them about the truth. Not only is his physical sight restored, but he grows in faith in Jesus. Initially, he merely states, the man called Jesus did this for me. Next, he says, he is a prophet. Later, he proclaims, this man is from God. And when Jesus reveals that he is the Son of God, the blind man, now healed, finally professes his faith. Lord, I believe. 
the blind man who was treated poorly by the people of Jericho becomes a faithful follower of Jesus. Jesus concluded saying, I have come into the world so that those without sight may see. We have to judge which is worse, being blind or pretending to see when in fact we are blind. The coming of the light of Christ ought to be good news for those living in darkness. Yet, this is not always the case. In a sense, the light of Christ throws up the shadows and shows up the darkness in our lives. Envy, pride, pessimism, jealousy and selfishness. But the light of Christ doesn't come to judge us. It comes as a friend to brighten up our lives, to comfort us. A true story was posted on the internet about a certain lady passenger who was seated next to a black gentleman in the economy class on the transatlantic flight on 14th of October 1998. The lady was visibly upset to be seated next to the black gentleman and she called the flight attendant to ask for an exchange of seats. The flight was full and there were no vacant seats. The other passengers overheard this lady's conversation and were angry at her rude demand to the flight attendant. The flight attendant approached the captain. The air hostess arrived and reported that the captain was apologetic and sent a word to say that there was only one spare seat in the first class. The lady grinned and immediately began to collect her hand baggage to move to the seat from the economy class to the first class. Not so fast lady said the air hostess and then she looked at the black gentleman and said, Sir, we thank you for putting up with such an unpleasant passenger next to you. Would you please move to the seat in the first class? There was a spontaneous applause in the plane. The lady in the plane was blinded by her prejudices and perceptions. Our perceptions shape our attitudes and our approach to life. What matters is not how we perceive, but how we grow to understand how God sees us. True perception is seeing people and things from God's point of view. If we fail to see the world from God's point of view, then we are blind and in darkness. We need the same God to enlighten us and motivate us in this endeavor. The greatest tragedy today is not to be born blind, but to have eyes and fail to see and even refuse to see. The Pharisees in their pride and self righteous attitude though physically sighted, moved away from Jesus the light. The blind man, on the other hand, in his humility, accepted his blindness and approached the true light and his whole being received the light of Jesus. After healing people with different illnesses, Jesus often tells them, Your faith has made you well. Instead of taking the credit on himself, he gives the honor and the credit to those who were healed. Though Jesus with divine power worked miracles, he recognized the role of those who were healed in the whole process. The wonders that Jesus performs are not merely spectacular gestures. They are intended to lead to faith through a path of interior transformation. Every Eucharist challenges us to become aware of the blind spots and dark areas of our lives. May Mary most holy, as Pope Francis says, help us 
to imitate the blind man so that we may be flooded with the light of Christ which will shine brightly in and through our lives. Amen.